Hi guys, it's Terry with the Covered Chipboard, and I have a hopefully quick little video for you about working with chipboard and uh, the Cricut Maker. So I have a new series of projects coming out soon. Hopefully in the next couple of days, the first one will show up, um, and it's called Terry's Craft Along. And this has this is part of the first project that I'm doing, and I'm going to be using the Cricut uh, heavy chipboard on the Cricut Maker. So one of the things I wanted to show you and that I've discovered over the past couple of days, uh, cutting several sheets of chipboard, was that this is uh, a canvas that would come up out of this project, and you can see it's got three pieces. So if you click Make It, Cricut will take the objects that are on the, um, ah, there it goes, that are on the uh, mat or the canvas, and they will, it will scrunch them all together in order to save space on your materials so that you don't have waste with your materials. Well, there's really not that much left on a lot of these, and um, I don't really am not going to be concerned about that. If you, if I zoom in here, it will show you this space between these two objects right here. That is only about an eighth of an inch. And what I found out is that is really not enough space uh, or not enough of a gap between the two pieces in working with the chipboard. Um, what I found is when it cuts on these two lines on either side of this little gap, after oh six or seven cuts this little one eighth inch piece will start popping up and shredding all over the place and I don't feel like I got as clean of a cut on these pieces because of that so I'm going to fix that so that um, that won't happen so first thing I'm going to do is material size I'm going to change that to 11 by 11 and again this is the Cricut heavy chipboard that they've just come out with and this is working with the Cricut Maker machine. It's the only machine that will cut this chipboard. So I'm going to move these around and to allow more space. So I'm going to pull on this little rotate level, try to get this as straight as I can, and then move it down here. I'm a little off. Oops, went a little too far. That's kind of tricky sometimes. There we go. And then I'm going to spread these apart. Now you'll notice when I change my material size over here, it gave me an 11 by 11 material to work with. And this red line is the farthest you could place an item to cut. Um, it has to have this edge or this border left on the mat. So, as you can see, I've spread this out. I've got quite a bit of, of space now. I would leave at least a quarter of an inch minimum. Um, if you can go more, go more. So, you'll get a much better cut this way. And once you've done this, you can just click Continue. And it's looking now for my Cricut Maker. <clears throat> Pardon me. And then you'll need to set your material if you haven't done this before. Click Browse All Materials. Up here in the search bar, type in Chipboard. And you'll see the Heavy Chipboard 2mm, and that's what you want to use. Anytime you see um, a material listed, and there's a star, and there's a uh, little Cricut guy, the little Cricut guy tells you that it's a Cricut manufacturer setting. And um, to my knowledge, um, Design Space will not allow you to change the settings for the knife blade or for the chipboard material. Now you can create your own as you can see. They've got a light chipboard in here also. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but um, I've got my own setting down here. But that is not a Cricut and it's not the Cricut material. This is for the medium chipboard that I use a lot and have used in the past. So you want to select this two millimeter, and if you click this star, it should put it in with your favorites, so you don't have to do this again. So I'm going to click OK. Whoops, there we go. Are done. I'm having trouble with my mouse today. 
and it tells you material set to heavy chipboard 2 millimeter. Move your star wheels all the way to the right. You need to do that. Do not forget to do that because if you don't, it will leave grooves in your chipboard right through the middle of your project. So you don't want that happening. Um, make sure that your mat, your material is no bigger than 11 inches, which it won't be. And you're using the strong grip mat and the material is taped to the mat with masking tape on all four sides. And then this particular image had a drawn line on it, so it's asking me to load my pen, load the knife blade, and then load the mat and press go. And that's all there is to it. And it will cut just fine. Now, another thing I want to mention is that the Cricut Maker wants to cut heavier materials. Um, now that I say heavier material, I've only worked with the chipboard so far. But it wants to make 20 cut passes. You do not need 20 cut passes, and if you do that, you will most likely cut through your mat. What I have found, and I've cut about, oh, maybe 10 sheets of chipboard so far, and what I have found is between 10 and 11 passes is perfectly good. Um, if you have these curved areas like that are in here, or you have circles, uh, a more complex image, then you might need to bump that up a little bit, but for basic images uh, or shapes and just these little curves, um, 10 to 11 has been fine. Uh, on the straight pieces, I used 10. When I came in and started doing these pieces with the curves, I did 11. And it cut all the way through and did not cut onto my mat. So, um, to stop it so that it won't continue cutting, all you do is you press the... Um, pause button and then unload your mat. Now you might want to check it before you unload it but uh, I'm pretty sure that it'll be cut all the way through and if you find a little section like maybe in a corner um, that isn't cut all the way through just use your craft, your craft knife and just kind of poke it through there from the back and, and cut it and you'll be fine. But I again had no problems with 10 or 11 passes. So um, another Tip. Let me bring this in here. Uh, let me find this. Okay, this is our um, the uh, Cricut chipboard. Now, I did use on this chipboard. I suggest using the strong grip mat, and like I said, tape it around the edges, and it'll stay just fine. When you first take this chipboard out of this packaging. It's been compressed, so it has to have time to breathe. It's recommended that you leave it overnight. I have not done that. Um, I've left it maybe a few hours or so. But what happens is, as this starts to expand and come up to its full thickness, it will warp a bit. And if you try to use it on the mat with it warped, it stopped my machine a couple of times. So I don't suggest that. Uh, you need to get it as flat as you can before you use it. Now, I was able to put a hand on one side and a hand on the other side and just kind of easily bend it and manipulate it until I got it flat enough that it was fine. And I stuck it on the mat and we went off from there and it worked just fine. I didn't have any problems with it. Um, here is an example of how I tape my chipboard. This is just blue painter's tape. And I have not taped it over here. If I had more of an intricate cut thing going, I might tape over here. But I just use these same four pieces of tape the entire time through six sheets of chipboard. And what I did was I would just peel this part up and fold it back, remove the chipboard, add a new chipboard, then lay these little pieces down again. And it worked just fine. So, there's yeah, a couple of little tips there. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention, if you haven't done, or show you, if you haven't done this before, is, I'm not sure, and this is rel uh, relative to my project, I'm not sure yet if I'm going to send this full sheet out, because this pattern will be free, um, or if I'm going to use the individual canvases. 
I might send this because it's just easier, but as you can see, this has got a lot of different items on it. And where I've got these kind of bunched together, those are each separate canvases. So for this project, you're going to need like one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of the Cricut chip, Heavy Chipboard. And um, if I send this like this, it's very simple. You can't, Design Space doesn't allow you to select an item, copy it, and then paste it onto a new canvas. Um, I, I would like to see them do that, but it, so far I haven't seen them that available. Uh, if I'm wrong, please leave a note in the comments and let me know. Uh, I did not try it yet for this, but I last time I tried, you couldn't do it. So what I will do is, this will come up under a, uh, the original name, TCC Haunted House. Now, when you get it, you'll want to save it to your own design space area. And you can rename it at that time if you wish. Um, but what I would do is take this, save it as another name, and then you can go through and select everything that you don't want and remove it, leaving just this one section, and then do save and save as and give it a different name. So what I did was I took the first section like this, I did a save as, and I named it TCC Haunted House, and it'll have dash one when it comes up, and then I just put A. A, B, C, D, and on forever how many canvases I needed. So that's how you can separate that. And if we go back here, and look at my projects, you can see uh, here's the original, and then I came up and I had 1A, 1B, 1C, D, E, F, and G. So now I have all those uh, elements on separate canvases, and I separated them according to the 11 by 11 inch size. So I tried to save you as much you know, limit it to the smallest number of sheets as I could, but this was the best I could do for right now. So, um, that's it, I believe, uh, for now, and I'll probably have some more tips along the way, um, as I work some more on this project, so stay tuned, and thanks for stopping by and watching. Oh, and if you will, please hit the like, please, or the thumbs up, Please um, subscribe, and if you want to be notified when I add new ones, click on right-click on the little alarm and set your notifications so you can get notices as to when I upload new video or new content. But hitting the subscribe really, really helps me a lot. I'm trying to get my subscriber number up, so share it with your friends. Let them know about the project, about the project series. And everything is going to be videotaped, and I'll also have PDF files with written instructions or have it on my blog. So, you know, visual learners, those who prefer written tutorials, this will cover the whole spectrum. So, and I'm also going to do a live with questions and answers or additional help for anybody who might need it. So, um, and I haven't worked out all the projects yet. I'm going to have different projects. I'm going to try to do two, if not three, projects per month. There'll be some that will be longer, like this first one that will go over several weeks, and there will be shorter one-day or two-day ones. So um, it's going to be interesting, and I'd like to hear your comments also on what you would prefer. Shorter, quick projects, longer ones, minis, um, journal books, just whatever give me your suggestions um i really will listen and i really do want to know really do want to know what you think so don't forget hit the subscribe thumbs up and i'll see you next time thanks a lot guys have a great day